Hello uh, to everyone uh, watching this in South Africa and um, welcome to this Q&A which is part of the ninth European Film Festival in South Africa's program online. Um, today it's my great pleasure to welcome you to um, a Q&A with the director of the feature film Great Freedom, Sebastian Mesa. Um, Sebastian, um, welcome and thank you so much for sharing your thought-provoking and deeply moving film with us in South Africa. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, I'm really, okay. uh, I'm really um, glad. I'm really honored. It's, uh, it's great. Super. Um, I'm going to um, get into just uh, sort of some of the questions that I that came out for me when watching this film. Um, first, um, I want to make the comment that the film is really beautifully told, and it goes about weaving both personal and political themes in one narrative uh, very subtly, uh, but also very powerfully. Um, in the way that you show the cruelty of um, the criminalizing of people's sexuality, it's, it's quite important work what you did there. How did you and uh, Thomas Ryder come up with the script um, and how was the co-writing process? Hmm. It's been a long process actually. Uh, we started um, when we, we came across an article, um, well, it was in a... In a, in a in a book of uh, in a book of queer history and uh, of Hamburg actually um, German city, and um, there they they there was a chapter about these cases of gay men who were liberated from con from the Nazi concentration camps and put directly into prison to serve the remaining sentences, and we read this and uh, it was like. Um, I, I didn't know what to make out of it, it was so strange because for me the the. the the allies you know the british and the americans uh, the and the french they have always been the liberators for they they freed us from fascism and in this case they were on the same level as the as the as the nazis um because they had their they had similar laws in their own countries so for them it was righteous to have gay people um locked up in or uh, beaten to death and uh, locked up in concentration camps. So they, they, th those men had to serve their remaining sentence and put directly into prison. It was uh, really um, disturbing for me. And um, so we started researching about this this law, this Article One Hundred Seven Five. It was called in Germany, um, and. Um, it, I, I, I learned to know that I didn't know too much about it, actually. I heard about it and I knew that homosexuality in Germany and Austria and in Central Europe was uh, illegal at one point, but um, it seemed so far away for me. And, um, and, um, and, and it was um, a kind of, yeah, disturbing that I, that, that, that I had almost no knowledge about it. And I, and I, then we started to ask around in the gay community here in Vienna. And um, it turned out that most of the younger people also don't, didn't know about any, anything about it. But uh, in fact, the law went on until 94 in, in Germany, in Austria, even longer, um, like 2002. So it's, uh, it's really not long ago. And um, um, yeah, then we started researching and um, found, and and it was the whole um, the whole effort the state took in pursuing so many harmless men, hundreds and thousands of them, was uh, was really um, yeah, it was shocking. And um, and um, we talked to survivors a lot, or to victims, so to say, people, older people who who were imprisoned back in the 60s. There's this very famous gay cafe in, uh, in, in um, Vienna. It's an old cafe, really nice. And uh, I've been there a lot of times before, uh, before working on this film. And um, there's always uh, some older people sitting in the back, uh, you know, some older couples who are not involved with, uh, with the crowd and with the younger crowd. 
they're always somewhere sitting in a corner and um, and we just went to them and, and talked to them and um, it turned out that all of them had um, experiences with the law enforcement back in the 60s and there was one very moving um, situation when an older couple there was um, they spent a lifetime together like the, um, they met in the 70s and uh, spent their whole time together as a couple. And one of them started to tell the story that he was in prison back in the 60s. And his partner said, turned to him and said, what, you never told me that you've been in prison. So it was a big taboo for, for the older people also, for the people who experienced this kind of um, discrimination. And um, yeah, it was. It, and I, I also started to, to ask myself, why did I never talk to them? Why it, they always they 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 like they they were in the shadows and this whole chapter of history was um um a blind spot in a way yeah and so that's that's that was more or less why we started working on the film yeah and and while this is a historic film and um, authoritarian and fascist use of state power is not the same in that respect with, regard, with regards to homosexuality. There is a wave of right-wing political parties winning elections in Europe. Mm. And at least from outside, there's a sense that many gains of the left in Europe are being um, threatened and mm. in some cases taken away. Um, what's your take on that? Yeah, it's um, it's it's frightening, of course, and not only for gay rights. I mean, they, we see the same thing happening in the, in the states, in Florida. There, laws like this are coming back, not in the same intensity or not in the same, but in Hungary, in Poland, there it's it goes overnight, and it's uh, it's really threatening democracy um, and. Uh, um, endangering all the democratic rights that have been achieved, you know, women rights, uh, freedom of uh, press, and uh, gay rights is only a part of it. It's um, it, it's about um, democratic rights that have been fought for a long time. They are endangered again, and uh, and that's uh, really, of course, that's that's frightening very much. Yeah. I mean, um, when you uh, talk about the LGBTQI community. There are many other uh, groups of uh, queer people or, or kinds of queer people not uh, included in the film that you made, but uh, those struggles still exist like mm. on the ground in Europe. What, what, what is the, yeah, what is the state of the queer movement looking outside of just gay men um, in Europe, in your in your view? Well, I mean, um, in countries like Germany, um, Austria, France, and Great Britain, I mean, the rights are quite solid, I think, right now, um, for all the queer people and all LGBTQ people, it's, um, it's, um, I think it's never been better in a way, but uh, freedom is a is a very fragile thing, and um, and that's what you said about the right wing movements that are coming back. It, um, I mean, we we saw it in in Austria that the the right wing and the conservative party they got together, and um, all of a sudden it goes so fast that that all of a sudden. Um, yeah, laws are, are being changed and um, everything, yeah, the, the change can go very, very quickly. And I think this is um, something um, that freedom has to be preserved at any cost. So. And, you know, when you talk about these two things, these two uh, topics we've just touched on in the last two beats, uh, the question of allyship comes to mind um, when you were doing your research and also in your own experience within the queer movement in 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 the west um, to what extent uh, can other marginalized people kind of uh, work 
uh, with uh, the queer movement and, and those people within the queer community who are more privileged to be able to realize liberation for all people. What is, how is the, yeah, the movements that you were researching, how are they aligning themselves with these larger political debates that have to be had because of the, of the sudden way in which the political wave has changed over the last maybe 20, 20 at the most years? I'm not sure I, I got the question right. But <clears throat> so I'm wondering how the queer movements that you've had chance to research as part mm. of your preparation and your work on this film, how are they aligning themselves with all of the other movements that are take that are well beset with urgency like right now? So mm -hmm. migrants issues, mm -hmm. uh, women's liberation mm -hmm. issue, equality, equal pay, and all of these things. How, yeah, how does the the queer movements that you've had chance to to look at as part of your your research into what's happening in the community now that you described, how does that, yeah, how do these ideas kind of uh, get debated in those spaces and how does the movement participate in allyship in those movements? Well, I think it's all about open-minded people in, in, in fact, and, and as, a, as a minority, you're always a part of, of, of you have to be open-minded if <laughs> you have no other chance because uh, in, in general, I think, not all of them, but um, in general, the majority of, of, of minorities is um, you have to be open-minded because you're, you're part of a minority. So, um, so I think, um, yeah, you, you, you have the sensitivity of, for, for all these um, themes of, of, yeah, of women's rights, of, of all, all the, um, yeah, all the, the rights that, that that suppressed people are uh, um, have to have, you know. Um, so yeah, in the way uh, that they're bound together, like the they're liberations. Bound together. Are, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And normally, I mean, all the people I, I know are part of um, also um, are, yeah, open-minded in, in in a way that they are also part of political movements that are, of course, um, more left-wing because it's it that's the that's the nature of solidarity and um, yeah yeah and um, against hatred and uh, against um, fascism all kinds of fasc fascistic. Um, thoughts yeah yeah um maybe we can come back to talking about the film a little mm. bit um uh you filmed quite a lot of scenes like in very um close uh closed environments because that's what a prison kind of requires and um showing a lot of horror and hopelessness in the experience and the administration of incarceration do you have any opinions about um, like the penal system, having had to kind of physically reenact that experience of being locked out and the way that it is now? Um, yeah. If I have personally experienced, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. Do you have any opinions Opinion. about the penal uh, how system? It, how it changed? Yeah. I mean, there was a big change in the in in end of sixties. The 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 big. Um, I mean, with all the movements, that's where the, the this paragraph, this article one seven five was uh, amended. Also, it 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 was um, um, not abolished, but it was at least it was amended. And this was, uh, I mean, um, went with all the the, the social. Um, um, how to say that the, the, all the movements that went on with the 68 movement, you know, um, um, the liberation, the, the student movements, the hippies, and um, and there the penal system also was changed very yeah. fundamentally um, in 68, I think, in, in Germany. And uh, of course, um, it, it, it changed to, to um, let's say human or more human system than it was before. So, um, 
but still, I mean, a prison is a prison, and um, and if you go to a prison, if you go to a prison today, of course, it should be the the idea of um, human. Um, I don't know the English. It's hard to in English. Um, you know the the human way of treating prisoners and yeah. and and yeah. the idea of resocialization. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, no, like uh, rehabilitation. Rehabilitation, and... yeah. So this idea didn't exist before. So now this this was the big change that that rehabilitation is possible. And um, and but if you go to prison today, even now in 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 Germany in Austria, often it's not. You don't feel it that this is the spirit. You know, you see, you see, you talk to the guards, you talk to the um, to the wardens, and and you see, they don't really. I mean, they have to believe it because it is um, it is in the law. But um, personally, they don't really see it like this. And um, I think this is also gives uh, away how they treat prisoners. For example, this, um, this this solitary confinement it still exists in a in a in a very cruel way, and even mm -hmm. even the dark rooms with uh, no light, you know, it's it's not uh, used very often, but it still exists, and uh, it, it's so you start thinking what what has really changed. I don't, I mean, yeah, it's getting it, it's it interesting. better, but um, yeah. I was going to say that it was very interesting to see how you were showing the cycle every time he shows up in the cell with this mm. packet of provisions, um, but also those solitary scenes are very like disturbing, um, even when there's nothing on the screen and it's just the sounds. Um, and to imagine that for a day or for a number of days, it's quite a cruel thing to imagine. And I think for uh, a lot of countries, particularly our country as well, there's this mm. uh, pattern of recidivism mm -hmm. um, where people come out and then come back and then come out and then come back mm -hmm. and that becomes part of the world that they know. And this is something that came through very clearly in the, the scenes that you shot and it's um, interesting how you collaborate with your actors to kind of show those things across. Mm -hmm. mm. Is it a question? <laughs> no. uh, it was a comment more. A comment, yeah, thanks um, a lot. Yeah. I'd really like to hear what, what uh, if you, there's anything you'd like to share about that collaboration, about bringing forth those, those moments on screen. W with the actors? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I mean, um, it's hard to say because uh, we didn't have any any special. We just uh, worked on the film. It's uh, we didn't have any special method, but um, we tried to come as close as possible to the feeling. I mean, it is not really possible to understand how it's what it's like to be in solitary confinement for for two days. I mean, that, that's uh, already horrific. So. Um, we, we spent there half a day, we tried it, but it's not the same thing because we are free people. So we can uh, knock on the door and say, please let me out. So this is not, uh, you can't get to this experience. It's impossible. So you have to reenact it in a way. And um, that's why we shot in a, in a real prison, in an abandoned prison to at least have, have uh, a relocation. To be to be bound to this, um, you know, to have this, to be forced to have this history of um, um, what what happened there in this place, you know, and uh, how it's yeah, how it how it's like to be locked up in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so I understand that you, you also shot half the film before the pandemic began, and mm -hmm. then the other half after the pandemic pandemic began. Um, and you notice um, uh, that uh, physically uh, the actor looks different, mm -hmm. uh, thinner in the beginning, and then more 
um, like normal mm -hmm. after. Mm -hmm. Um, after this, do you want to talk about that and how that worked working with the actor for this uh, physical change? Yeah, yeah, he he went on a diet. This was planned actually. This was not because of the pandemic. It it made it more difficult the, the break in the pandemic, but um, because he he gained weight and then he had to lose it again for shooting. So uh, it was a tough process for him. Um, he lost like I think. Um, 13, 12, 13 kilos in a very short time. And we wanted to have this fear. I mean, you you know, it's it's a long period of time we are, we are um, showing in the film. So um, we had all this makeup and uh, I mean, you watch a film and you know the makeup is fake, of course. It's, um, and we wanted to have something that's real, that, that change, that's changing for real, you know, and this is the physical change. So you, you watch the film and you see from one time to the other, it's it's subtle, it's not very super obvious, but it's you, you, you notice it and you see, okay, something is different, he's thinner. So it really is, um, there really is um, another time, you know, in for real, this, this uh, feeling we wanted to create. So it's not only all the makeup uh, stuff, the gray hair and the beard and uh, that's changing, but all, also physically changed. So to get the feeling that um, that we are in another time. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. That's the end of the questions that I've prepared. And perhaps there's something that I didn't think of to ask that you wanna share with audiences when they watch this. The only thing that I, Miss that you want to share with everyone? Mm, no, not really. There's um, we could go on talking for a lot of t for hours, but um, I, I hope uh, people enjoy the film. And uh, yeah, I don't know actually how, how it was in in South Africa the the the, the laws uh, the um, when our new, yeah when our new constitution uh, was. Uh, introduced in 1996. Uh, this was the first time where uh, uh, gay marriage was allowed, but also that okay. one uh, was no longer in danger of being persecuted for. Okay, but there was persecution existed also in South Africa. Yeah, of course, no. Like everywhere else, it has been the case, uh, yeah. but yeah. yeah we've tried. Yeah. yeah, we have a very good constitutional, like set of constitutional protections for uh, queer rights, uh, queer families. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that uh, there's still the same level of violence against uh, mm -hmm. queer lives. Mm -hmm. um, probably the highest level of violence against lesbian women mm -hmm. uh, and transgendered women. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's still a, st uh, a stigma mm -hmm. in certain uh, communities um, that um, films like this, it creates an opportunity for a discussion and mm. uh, for in perceptions. Mm, I'm happy. Great. Yeah. So thank you so much, Sebastian. It's been such a nice conversation. Thank um, you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so this is part of the ninth European Film Festival in South Africa, um, which is themed Innocence and Beyond. That's the theme for this year, which is um, um, not just uh, referring to innocence as a legal concept, but also as a, a human quality that's being explored through the festival's themes in this film, The Great uh, Freedom, Great Freedom, and another 11 films, I believe. Um, and it also is a lot of films that include perspectives through the eyes of children, the young, innocent in the world, finding their way through intellectual and emotional growth, dealing with social conventions and peer pressure and experiencing sport joy, as well as personal loss and pain. It's also about uh, coming of age experiences, um, and um, 
yeah, I'd like to encourage you to go to the website for the European Film Festival to see all the films that are there. Some of them are available, most of them are available online. Um, and to, um, yeah, take part in a lot of interesting conversations that are being brought to us by filmmakers and so carefully curated by the European Film Festival. Thank you. Thanks.